Hi, I'm Álvaro Henrique, and now it's time to learn Catarina and Josefa's Pratens Marsh Funebre. This piece was taken from her method for guitar. You can find an Urtex edition that is free and also in public domain at imslp.org. Although her name was Catarina Josefa Pratin, she was also known by her husband's name. She was married to a Sidney Pratin, and therefore she is also known as Madame Sidney Pratin. Depending on how you search uh, on Google and other websites, you will find more results, unfortunately, by uh, Googling or searching for Madame Sidney Pratin instead of her own name, Katarina Josefa Pratin. That's something we have to change. So I'm uh, calling her in this video, in the description, as Katarina Josefa Pratin. And I don't mind losing some views because of that, you know. It's, it's more important to treat her for what she was, not from uh, for who she married to. Uh, this piece, I think it's one lovely work by her, uh, a very impressive, expressive piece. And I think it's one of those compositions for, by, for guitar by a female composer that you should definitely learn. It's 2021. Nowadays, it's quite justifiable for many guitarists, including female guitarists, not to have one single work by a female composer on his or her repertoire, current or past. I don't know for how long this will be justifiable. Prepare yourself for a time where which it, this won't be justifiable anymore and every guitarist will have to have at least a few pieces by a female composer on his or her repertoire. Um, it's even better if you become an, an agent of change and learn these pieces and you can be, you can show that it's not difficult, it's not impossible, uh, it's ex it is accessible, uh, and you can include easily works by female composers on your repertoire. So this March Funebri, uh, it's in three parts. The first part is the most related to the harmony. I have to dig a little bit the harmony here to understand because uh, the phrasing it's closely close to the harmonic tensions. When it's a, ton a tonic, you should play softer, calmer. When it's a dominant, you should play it uh, more stressed, more forte. And the subdominant, it's moderate tension, so it's a little bit stronger than the tonic, but not as strong as the dominant. We begin, it's a piece in A, min, a minor, so we begin the tonic, A minor. Then the dominant first, dominant with four, then the dominant. Tonic relative, it's still tonic relative, then he is also preparing for the dominant of the tonic relative. With fourth, first, then the dominant itself. Tonic relative, dominant of the subdominant, dominant of the tonic relative, tonic relative, dominant of the tonic relative. Once again, dominant with fourth, dominant, then repeats to the tonic. So we play a little bit softer on the tonic, stronger on the dominant, dominant of the subdominant, 
dominant, sub dominant, dominant of the tonic relative, then it's second. We can go to the second, uh, uh, second number. So it's tonic relative, uh, sub dominant, tonic relative, dominant of the tonic relative. It's the same chord and then tonic relative okay then you phrase accordingly then we move on now we have an effect all pieces that are related to death be it a tombeau a requiem or a marche funebre like that there is this why moment it's a moment of the piece where you question why this person why now why that way that's the moment why and these uh, triplets they are uh, in music uh, the what would be the verbalization of the why of course in english you could play with only one note or two notes at the most uh, but because this word is not the same in every idiom the rhythm can be changed therefore uh, for instrumental music, the rhythm can change a little bit, but it's the very same effect. This insistent motif on a repeated note, uh, sh the, uh, symbol, uh, making uh, this uh, meaning the question of why this person, why now, why this way. And this is what we're having here. <laughs> This must be the most expressive part of your piece, the most, the strongest one as well. But you need to be to play quite fast, so don't try to reach the dynamic here uh, by playing with more muscle strength. Do it playing longer. Uh, if you play very short movement you reach, you play softer okay. as you move more your head without changing the muscle strength you play more louder and this is what you need to do that play in a way that you can you even close your fingers touch your palm of your hand in order to achieve uh, that strength without uh, compromising uh, the agility, the fluency that we need here. There is one contour, a problem when you choose to make dynamics with the uh, size of the movement, the length of the movement, which is, it is more difficult to be precise and you can sometimes uh, pluck a note, a, a string that you don't want to. However, Catarina knew that. And see how friendly she was? You are playing also a E on the second string. So the worst that it can happen if you do the dynamic that way is that is your finger also playing the second string. And that's fine if that happens. So even if you make a mistake here, you are right, so you feel free to do the dynamics with the length of the movement. And you can even be safer by muting the third string on, then, wow, then it's totally fine to do that way. Okay, and then we have dominance and tonics followed here. And when it's a dominant, Strong when it's tonic soft. Okay, I have a video playing that piece, you can uh, hear that there. Okay, then we move the same, the same idea to the tonic, but here we have a dominant of the subdominant and subdominant, so it's a dominant chord. The third 
poverty. I feel that this is more a texture section. It's more about uh, symbols than the notes. We have this uh, descending chromatic line. And the first time is not really chromatic. Then it reads a dominant chord and go to the tonic. Then on the second time, then it's really the uh, chromatic. Dominant, tonic, and ends on the tonic. Okay. I see that this chromatic descending uh, is just an effect, you know, as the delivery of a message. So. So I try to start forte and go down slowly to reach that effect, especially here when it, it's repeated on a octave higher. Then dominant and tonic. Okay. There is also another symbol here, which is the bass. This rhythm here. It was known by composers and listeners that then as the symbol of the destiny knocking on the door. Beethoven also used that rhythm. That same idea. It's a different rhythm, in fact, but the same idea. And this is also another section common in those pieces, which is the memento mori. Remember, you are going to die as well. It's not only a way to uh, make people afraid of death, but also in a way to remind them that their life is also finite and you should live your life as better uh, and as you can because your time will come eventually. I like to play this Memento Mori very piano on a very different color. So we haven't explored the metallic so far, so that's why I'm I'm playing metallic here because that will make this be different from anything else, and and very piano because like the dancing, when you begin you're playing so forte here that you may not pay attention to the dancing knocking your door, just like we do in our lives, but. By the time you reach the end there, you definitely listen to the destiny calling. And that's how I feel this section is. It's a symbolism of the memento mori. When it ends, then it's just some... a convention of ending you don't need to be precise well precise to what is written not to play the rhythm as written but have to be precise to the feeling that Katarina wanted us to feel so uh, we have a uh, 18 uh, quarter note sorry quarter note then a pause of quarter note Wait for a total silence, especially if you're playing in a room full of resonance. Just play, stop, listen to the silence. When the silence arrives, then you're going to prepare for the following notes. And I like to play that, uh, that, that, that A as close to the last A as possible. So I don't play like as if it were a quarter note with one dot. Play as if it were a quarter note with two dots or maybe three dots. To make this destiny knocking a little bit more similar to how it is. Have fun. I wish you could add this piece to your repertoire 
and be an agent of change and include female composers in your repertoire and open up the minds of all the guitarists that it is possible we have good music from at each uh, time, each epoch. This is a romantic piece. See you.